Well, the much anticipated El Nino has arrived officially. NOAA declared it today. Waters off the coast of South America and the Eastern Pacific have warmed past that half a degree Celsius threshold for more than a month and likely will get stronger. So here's looking at uh, those water temperature anomalies or difference from normal and you can see the big swath of red stretching out from the coast of South America into the middle of the Pacific Ocean and that's how we define El Nino. So let's take a look back since December uh, of 2022. So just several months ago, we still had colder than normal water in the Pacific, Eastern Pacific. Those are La Nina waters or La Nina conditions. Our third in a row, a triple dip La Nina, that rare occurrence. And the trade winds blowing stronger, pushing surface water to the west and that allowed the water to upwell uh, or bring deep cold water up to the surface, that whole situation has shut down or weakened. So now we're developing those El Nino conditions where those trade winds are lighter and that allows the water to warm pretty rapidly here. So we really just moved into El Nino territory in the last couple of months, but officially have reached that half a degree Celsius or warmer for more than a month uh, criteria just within the last month here. And the models do show El Nino getting stronger. In fact, a likelihood of a strong El Nino, but what we're really watching still is, do we get into that super El Nino territory? That's when we get to two degrees Celsius or more. Some models do still get us there here by the winter months. Uh, but when we break it down in terms of probabilities by each category, I've highlighted here one and a half degrees Celsius or higher. That's considered a strong El Nino, not quite super El Nino territory, but uh, the official NOAA probabilities do look at a slight likelihood of a strong El Nino developing this winter. We're already seeing some of the effects of that more convection or thunderstorms developing over those surface warm waters. That's how we get uh, that all that extra air into the upper atmosphere and then that lands somewhere outside of the area that those thunderstorms develop. And this is what creates all the different pressure patterns that impact global weather patterns above normal precipitation over the next several weeks forecast by the European model. And another thing that we're seeing is a strong subtropical jet here. Uh, we do see the jet stream strengthen uh, when we see El Nino develop here just to the north of it. And that is what creates higher shear, which we talked about can impact Atlantic hurricanes for the better by making fewer of them. So what happens with El Nino in the coming months? Still a bit of a question mark, but a strong El Nino likely and still the possibility of a super El Nino.